Here we consider these men, spiritual leaders within the church that the Lord has called. They're called elders here, but notice down in verse 7, there all of a sudden they're called bishops. A different word is used, obviously used synonymously. Paul is urging Titus to raise up godly men to lead the church. These would be elders. That's who they are. Godly men. The word bishop would mean that they it could also be translated overseer and often is in some of our English translations. That's what they do. They are mature men of faith, elders. What they do is oversee the flock of God. And then there's a third word in the New Testament that is used synonymously of these men that the Lord has called to use a lead, and that is shepherd or could even be translated pastor, a, a one who would lead the flock to pastures. And so we could say they are elders, godly, mature men. What they do is oversee. They are leaders. And how they do it is by shepherding or with a pastor's, shepherd's, servant's heart to the flock. And call it what you will. Should we have pastors or elders? Or should we have uh, uh, teachers or lead pastors? Call it what you will. We have so many varying names in the church today for church leadership, the leadership team, the lead pastor, the senior pastor, the teaching pastor, the, the lead elder, and you go on and so forth. What is so obviously clear from the New Testament is that every church was to have a plurality of godly men Leading the church. That is God's designed leadership plan. And it's to set in order the things that are lacking. You could imagine a courtroom all out of order. The plaintiff, the defendant screaming, yelling, attorneys, uh, those in the gallery shouting. And all of a sudden, the judge brings down his gavel. Order in the court. And in order to bring the whole place into order, what we have is, the, is the, the leader in the room appointed and taking authority. And in the Lord's mind, not in the Apostle Paul's mind, he an instrument of the Lord, and in the Lord's mind, for society to be set in order, for a church to be set in order, for a family to be set in order, the first rule of business is men need to be men. And the Lord would raise up godly men to lead. And it's what he has done, but not just any man. These have to be transformed men. <laughs> men that are transformed by the gospel. As 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5 tells us, for our gospel, and this was when Paul had come to Thessalonica, he said, for our gospel did not come to you in word only. So when Paul and the other apostles had come to Thessalonica, they made a big impact by preaching the gospel. He said, but our gospel did not come to you in word only. Do you notice? But also in power. What gave it such power? And, and in the Holy Spirit and in much assurance, he tells us why it had such an impact. As you know, what manner of men we were among you for your sake. And I, what we see here today is that the Lord desires to raise up godly men in leadership in the church to set in order the things that are lacking. But these men must be different than just regular men. They have to be changed men by the gospel. They have to be transformed men. And that's the man, the man that the Lord calls and, and uses. And it's important for all the church, and yes, we'll go on from here, to talk about other older men in the body that are not called in that leadership position. Younger men within the church. Older women, younger women. And it has an application and down, and every person has its role. But it's important for all of us to hear what the Lord would say about godly leadership. And it begins with godly elders being placed in the church. There's a couple of words that are also very important here in verse 5. When Paul said that I urge you to appoint elders, that's the, the word appoint 
anointing is or ordination, ordaining of elders. And then another word that's very important right after it, as I commanded you. And so this is a direct command from the Apostle Paul by the Holy Spirit of the living God to ordain and appoint elders. And what we find in this is that God is the one who has ordained and commanded this. In fact, when we say ordination, if we're to ordain someone, we're only recognizing the call of God upon their life. Like God said to Jeremiah, before I formed you, I, oh, I knew you and I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. From the beginning of creation, God himself has ordained men to lead in the home, the church, and in society. And the Lord has raised men up to do this great work. The Lord sees to it that this task would be completed. Jeremiah 3.15, the Lord says, I will give you shepherds according to my heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. It's the Lord's desire to do this great work and it's his plan in doing so. Every now and again, just to put my finger on the pulse of the way the rest of the world thinks, I spend a lot of time reading my Bible. I don't want to get tunnel vision, you know. I try to think, what does everybody else think about this topic? And so I'll grab my phone and I'll Google something. I did that this week. I Googled this. Where does male leadership come from? I like, what I, I like the AI overview that I got from that. <laughs> male leadership can be attributed to a variety of factors, including, well, number one, societal pressures. Men are often perceived, they like this word perceived. It's not true, but it's just, we're just perceiving that men are and leaders. Men are perceived as more assertive and dominant, while women are seen as more communal, cooperative, nurturing. Are they perceived that way, or is that the way God made them? Well, let's table that. Okay. Uh, uh, history, well, men gain the right to vote many years before women, and the gender wage uh, uh, gap persists. Well, also, there's the... Uh, evolutionary paradigm, quite possibly. Some believe that men are more likely to lead due to a biological urge for reproductive success, their sex drive, and they want their, their name to be tacked onto everything. Uh, or uh, here's, I love this one, misinterpreting confidence. People often mistake displays of confidence as a sign of competence, as if to say, <laughs> men are a bunch of incompetent leaders. They just seem more com confident than women, and so that's why we put them in places of authority. The last one is the best, though personality disorders <laughs> narcissism and psychopathy like literally do you know what the rest of the world thinks about male leadership it's a problem that needs to be resolved it's a bad thing not a good thing the same god who ordained the sun to rise and the stars to shine ordained male leadership in the home, the church, and society. And I would beg to say that when you see a man leading with the heart that God has called him to lead, that it's more glorious than the most beautiful sunset you'll ever see. It's by God's design and it's for his glory and for our good. And in setting in order the church, and in setting in order society, we look to the designer of creation. If anything is good, if anything is noble, if anything is right, if anything is beautiful, if anything is just, we behold it and we embrace it. And I tell you what, the Lord's design for his church and for godly men to lead it is a beautiful thing. But here's the problem with male leadership. Men are men. And we're sinful to boot. Selfish to the core. Stronger than a woman, at times more assertive, demanding of our own way. Sold on our own purposes and plans. 
And so before the Lord can use a man, he has to strip a man of his own selfish purpose and win him to himself. It's a gospel-transformed leader that leads well. And if it's a man who has to be marked by Jesus himself before he'll be used to impact any person for the gospel. Acts 20, 28 gives us the very exhortation as Paul is writing to the elders to whom he asked to to oversee and shepherd the the flock. All three of the Greek words are used here for leadership in Acts 20, 28 as he's writing to the Ephesian elders. And he said, therefore, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. God, the Holy Spirit, made these men overseers, these godly elders. And they were to do it by shepherding with a pastor's servant's heart the flock of God, he said, which the Lord purchased with his own blood. Certainly, leadership is not for selfish gain, but it's to serve those whom the Lord Jesus died for.